Clone Wars. Here's the sound of my Clone Wars. We heard about, but we didn't. I know a lot of you 
that have seen me at my table, we've talked about it, but we saw Anakin as the hero that we heard he was, but we didn't really get to see it in the films. Um, but we got to see it in the Clone Wars, and, and you know, you, you rooted for it, and it makes his fall so much more tragic. Uh, so it, it adds to the Star Wars uh, story as a whole. Yeah, I think that that's the coolest part, is we were, you know, a long time ago in a studio far, far away. <laughs> We were creating something that I think we all kind of hoped would become something special. And once those fortune cookies, as we call them, came out, and you realized parents are sitting, that grew up with Star Wars, watching now with their kids, and there's lessons that can be learned, so it's, it's meaningful, but it's Star Wars on a weekly basis. We get to do what Star Trek had, had done all those years ago, was get, like you say, going to people's homes every weekend. And it was also when social media was brand new. So we were able to interact with all of you in a way that nobody else had ever really got to do, and I think that's what made it really special. And that these two especially really knew how to take that, and because they're very young, you see. I'm the old man, you know. And um, old Ben Kenobi. But they were able to uh, get all of us to interact in a way that I think uh, is now something we take for granted. But it was really the first time that a show got to do that. And I give so much credit to my co-stars, not only for being tremendous actors, but really also being able to connect with all of you in a new way. And Ashley herself has just done this amazing connection with you all from creating a clothing line that we take so much for granted now. But Ashley Eckstein is so responsible for that. And then and we, we take for granted Hunky Matt Landry for being Hunky. <laughs> yes, but okay, I'm gonna, James is very humble. But I'm not looking Matt, for I know, but Matt and I were Padawans when it comes to voiceover. I mean, this was our first big voiceover role in Clone Wars, and we got to learn how to be voice actors alongside the greats like James Arnold Taylor. <laughs> Well, you know, it really was drama, because before Clone Wars, all, the only songs we could get were like, even, you know, movies that came out every few years, and sometimes like that, and so Clone Wars did bring it into the household, like you said, on a weekly basis, and that, and a myriad of you, were there any fans here that became fans of Star Wars through Clone Wars first? Raise your hand. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, it introduced love of this Star Wars. That, that was mind blowing for us. I remember specifically, we, we were recording one day, and, and somebody had sort of said, like, wait a second, what we're doing right now is going to be the first Star Wars that a, a young generation is going to see. And I think for all of us, that's pretty mind blowing. Because at that point, it was six movies, that's what we had. And, and now, that generation has grown up, and they're, they're coming to see us at our tables, and we're talking about it, and, it, and it's, it's wild. Because back then, that was like... It was the first movie yeah. that didn't have... <laughs> and as a kid, when you heard that, you were like a dog. Like, like, so yeah, so they had to come up with... So Matt Wood, genius sound designer that he is, had to come up with something that would get everybody's attention, remember? And he took D. Bradley Baker's voice a million times and overlapped it with all the clones at the beginning of the movie. And it's really awesome. Because I think we knew this was a cool movie, but now, thank you all of you that come to the table and say this was the first thing I saw, and then it means something to you, and you knew that Ahsoka was going to be an awesome character, and that we were going to get to learn more about Anakin, and that Obi-Wan would be just as charming as he was. So we're going to ask all of our guests before we get too far into some Star Wars, and of course, we've got a lot of fans who are going to ask you questions. We, we've been asking them to go back to when they were younger. Um, Star Wars, like, uh, it's, it's almost like, our, well, you know, we've had many Doctor Who guests here on stage, and for America, it's like, Star Wars is like our Doctor Who, like over there, right? So they, everyone grew up in it, it was like deeply steeped in their culture, and so everyone has a Star Wars story when they were a kid, you know? Um, so for you guys, like, what's your sort of Star Wars story when you were little? Well, for me, I grew up in Orlando, Florida, and my dad was a Disney cast member, so I grew up Disney, 
And I remember when Star Tours opened at Disney's MGM Studios. Hollywood Studios, but I just remember riding the ride and loving it. Um, and I had a plush Ewok, a little, you know, stuffed Ewok that I carried with me everywhere because I, I absolutely loved it. But I think just the awe and wonder of being put into Star Wars was just very cool. I don't have a major Star Wars story. I didn't grow up on Star Wars. But you're the chosen one! <laughs> 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 I, actually, I, I don't know that I, I had seen, I'm sure, like bits and pieces. I don't really remember watching one of the films until mm -hmm. I was probably like 13, maybe 14. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I, I think I was watching Attack on Clones. Remember? Uh, popcorn. And like that's, of course, I know pop culture. I knew, the, I knew the characters, but I didn't know how they how they you had a, uh, what was your first moment of like, oh wow, like I'm actually into Star Wars. Like, what was, what was that moment for you that I was actually into Star Wars? Like? Uh, well, I, I went to Skywalker Ranch and I walked in George's office and George goes, Anakin. So, that's it. That's it. That's your Star Wars story. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it. Well, so again, I'm, I'm the old guy in the room. Uh, I watched A New Hope when I was seven years old in a driving movie theater. And, uh, and then we would play Star Wars as a kid, so I would get the red electrical tape and put it on my legs so I could be Han Solo with the cool <laughs> pants because he had that, you know. And then the yellow one, you had to change it out. And I'd wear a little vest that took like a t-shirt and a black shirt and cut it into a vest so I could be, I want to be Han Solo, you know, so. <laughs> But he still wears that outfit. I'm That's sorry. right, I do. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, now I didn't know that old Ben Kenobi is said, Hello there. Well, I get to say hello there. So, so. Uh, well, uh, Ashley, it's it's uh, you know, it's not easy to create a new character that can stand with Anakin and Obi Wan, and uh, you know, so has been so beloved and so embraced, and it's been such a simple. <laughs> Inspiration and it's been, it's been so great to be able to see that beyond Clone Wars and Rebels and Force of Destiny, and like you've been able to, you know, bring that character, you know, back in some shape and form. What has it meant to you to embody that character? Because it's been, it's, 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 she's so unique and different, but so important. Well, a lot of people might not realize that I was cast as Ahsoka to just be myself. Oh. And because um, they didn't know what they wanted for Ahsoka. Uh, originally, Dave Filoni thought that Ahsoka should have an Icelandic accent. Oh. And, um, you know, he didn't tell anyone this, but he, he wanted her to sound like Bjork. Oh. And, uh, How's your Icelandic accent? Horrible. It's <laughs> absolutely horrible. And so when I went into the audition, I actually originally auditioned for Padme. Oh. And I was super bummed because. Um, I love Padme, but I sounded nothing like Padme, and so I thought I had no chance. And I almost left the audition, um, and then my agent was like, no, 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 please go in because you never know what could happen. And so I went in and said the first line is Padme, and sure enough, Dave Filoni stopped me and he was like, no, you sound nothing like Padme. Um, but he's like, but there's this new character, she's a 14-year-old girl, and we think might be right for her. Um, but then they told me that they wanted her to sound Icelandic. And I it's not that's not an accent that I just like have in my pocket. <laughs> you know, really? so, <laughs> so I did my best. But it was awful. So let's hear it, let's hear it. I still can't do it to this we day. We still have not gotten her to get that. No. I know because it's, it's been 17 years since I did that audition. Um, but somehow I got a call back. And they told me to practice my Icelandic, and so I did. I went to a dialect coach, and I thought I had mastered Icelandic. And then I go back in, and I say the first line in Icelandic, and Dave Filoni stops me again. And he was like, no, can you make it sound more Icelandic? And I was so frustrated. I did something I would normally never do, and I talked back to the director, and I said, I'm sorry, but I am doing Icelandic. I don't know what you want. 
voiceover actors actually, both me and uh, my daddy are both professional voiceover actors, so you guys are Ooh, absolute heroes for us. That's amazing. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you. And um, so I have so many questions, but I'll just say one, obviously. Um, and my question would be, what was like, what were some of the most emotional moments for you guys, like when Ahsoka leaves Anakin, or you know, when he's Anakin starting to the dark side, or you know, what were some of the most emotional moments to do in the booth? Yeah, I mean that was that was that was one of them. Uh, that, you know, when Ahsoka was leaving the Order, I think it was sort of like a we didn't really know what was going to happen with the show, with the characters, with seeing each other. Um, it was just a kind of all a big question mark. Uh, those were those were emotional ones for me. For Anakin, the whole Mortis arc was really yeah. emotional. Yeah. kind of play with Anakin in a darker space. Um, and there, there's that shot where he's, I think he might actually be on his knees and it's, yeah. I've got a picture on my table, yeah. but it's the, the Darth Vader like helmet behind him and you can yeah. hear the, the breath, you know, <laughs> like in the background. And it's it's so powerful, uh, just the, the, the vision of what's to come. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those were definitely some of the more meaningful, powerful moments we got to do in our life. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for what Matt was saying, when, at the end of season five, we didn't know that was going to be the series finale. <laughs> so we didn't know the show was going to get canceled. And um, I thought I was just saying goodbye to them for like a season. Because I knew I was coming back at the end of season six. So it was, it was definitely sad, but it wasn't the goodbye that, you know, we necessarily thought it was. Even for Ahsoka. You know, I didn't know what her future was. I I hoped that she would come back and join them. Um, and then everything happened, and the series got canceled. And so when Ahsoka and Vader reunited again in Rebels, yes. that was such a gift. Oh my God. When Ahsoka says, "I know Jedi." Because Ahsoka, in many ways, was saying goodbye to Anakin, and I was saying goodbye to Matt. Like, I never in a million years thought that Clone Wars would come back. I didn't think we would get a season seven. So, I thought that was probably the last time we were ever going to record together. Yeah. It, was, it was odd. It was odd to be in the booth with her and, and telling her that you will die. You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was interesting. Um, and it was also just a really, really cool creative choice made uh, by Dave and uh, George and you know, the powers that be to hear Anakin, but also hear Vader, and, and kind of like, it's just fun to talk about, was, was he trying to bait Ahsoka? Because was he full Vader at that moment and kind of baiting her in? Or was there a little bit of Anakin there and he was, Seeing her kind of brought out some of the, the Anakin, uh, it's, it's kind of fun to talk about. But yeah, cool. Um, I would have to say, you can kill me, but you'll never destroy me. It takes strength to resist the dark side. Only the weak can resist something. <laughs> with Anna Graves and, and Sam Whitwer and Clancy Brown. And, uh, those were fantastic and lawless. Uh, those were stunning for me because I didn't know what was coming. I got the script that day. And while I was reading it is when I found out, sorry, spoiler alert, with Satine. I did not know. So those emotions were real. Uh, and so that was probably, and then also getting to do the Mortis arc, you know. You are my brother, Anakin! Getting to do some of those classic lines was really very fun too. Oh, so those were Probably for me, then. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ethan. Uh, it's my third con, I think. Uh, and I wanted to ask you guys a question about the last season. So there's this line uh, when Rex and Ahsoka are escaping. Uh, I think it's Jesse. I can't remember which one exactly. Uh, Rex is trying to convince them to let Ahsoka go. And then I think it's Jesse who's like, we're under direct orders from Darth Sidious. And that was weird to me, because d does he know now? Does he know Palpatine is a Sith? Or is it is it like this this kind of unspoken rule? I 
I noticed in the Clone Wars where you're not supposed to show Palpatine in his alter ego. Uh, like, you can tell if you know, but there's a bit of plausible deniability. What do you mean, Palpatine? Sidious, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how to answer that. that that's probably more of a question for, uh, yeah, Dave. I, I mean, it's interesting though, right? I mean, if there's, if, the, if he's saying Darth, you would think that'd be a rumor. Ah, uh, when someone is named Darth, they're usually bad. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's bad. Yeah. You, you think rumor would have gotten around with the, the clone uh, trooper parents? Well, hmm. you know, I think the best writing, best writing creates speculation. You know, like it, right. it allows the fans to sort of create theories and just makes it interesting. You know. Yeah. Right. Yeah, great question. question. Yeah. No one's ever asked us that before, but it's definitely a question for Dave Filoni. And I'm scared if I answer it wrong, we'll, we'll, we'll get in trouble. <laughs> I'll have emails after this. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, go ahead. Thank you. Hi, I am absolutely thrilled to be surrounded by so many Clone Wars fans today. Mm -hmm. and I'm glad to be talking. <laughs> Someone behind the scenes let someone else that was brilliant to get Dave Filoni take over and kind of tell that story. So it combines so much. For people that love the originals and people who love the prequels, it is the perfect marriage of all of that. And I think it does it in a really true way. And we get to see, you know, everything from Bosk to, you know, Tarkin and all these characters and we find out more about them. It's really a behind the scenes of what they, what they love. Yeah, you know, I think that I think that actually brings up an interesting topic of uh, you know, since when Clone Wars first began to even now, there has the, the landscape of Star Wars has changed dramatically. You know, especially not only because there's movies, but then there's streaming and then there's you know there's everything in between. And uh, you know, if you notice the that we just discovered earlier today that the internet has opinions about things. If you notice that, they've got very hot opinions about things. And you know, there's, um, and unfortunately, and some of the like, some of the discussion has turned into debate, and unfortunately, some of that turned into fighting, and some of the like, uh, uh, toxic fandom sort of, you know, thing kind of comes up. And so, um, when you guys hear about that, and hear about kind of how um, there's sometimes division among fandom, what's your thoughts on that? Like, what do you, you know, as someone who's in the center of it, and as you sort of hear it sometimes, it sort of orbits around you. What's your reaction to? How fans say things like, you know, unfortunately they'll say, oh, you're not a true Star Wars fan, if da da da, you know, and just silly things like that. So, what's your what's your reaction to that? I mean, my my take is, I think debate is good. I think criticism is fun, like constructive criticism. I think that most people are upset with something because it comes from a place of passion, and they they want it to be great. And I don't know, maybe for them it just doesn't speak to them, but it might speak to your neighbor. So everyone's got these different opinions, but I think that's fun. I think it becomes toxic when it moves into like a negative territory, or it moves, moves into like hate against an actor or a specific writer or a specific director or something like that. But I think difference in opinion is fun. I think that's why, well, that's what's so fun about Star Wars. Well, so the Anakin, no guys. Palpatine hasn't gotten to him yet. <laughs> You know, there's so much we can't control. You can only control what your actions and what you do from day to day. And I've been so inspired by Ahsoka, and her true power is kindness. And in many ways, she represents the light side of the Force. And so I just do what I have the power to do, which is to be kind and to treat others as I would want to be treated, and listen 
to people if, let's say, they have a differing opinion from mine, um, and spread light however I can. And so I don't weigh in on any of those conversations, and I just do what I can do and, and, and be kind. Um, so to go back to the question before about um, what would we say to you know other Star Wars fans, um, to me, I think now, the Clone Wars and Rebels, they're so intertwined with the rest of the storytelling. For the longest time, it was like, well, animation is its own thing, but it's not anymore. It's literally a part of the overall story, and if you don't watch the animated shows, you're really out of the loop. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I, I feel bad for the fans, and I'm grateful when they say, I didn't know who Ahsoka was, but I went back and watched her um, in Clone Wars and Rebels. But if you only see Ahsoka in live action, and you don't go back and watch the animated shows, you really have no idea how great this character is. Yeah. And yeah. so, um, so yeah, I, I definitely recommend that fans that haven't seen the show, they go back and watch it purely for their research. Because otherwise, they're going to be completely out of the loop. You can always use the Jedi line if you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, go ahead. Uh, hello there. Uh, my name's Jake. This is my first awesome con. Uh, I've been watching your guys' show since I was eight years old. I'm a huge fan. grew up with it. The uh, question I wanted to ask you all today is um, what were some stories that uh, you guys wanted uh, to tell with your characters or uh, that didn't get to get told? Or do you guys feel like the Clone Wars kind of did a pretty good job of covering everything? I think there's always more stories to be, to be had. Personally, I love the Tales of the Jedi format. I, I really like I, I think that the episode with, with Anakin and Ahsoka and him, you know, with, with kind of a tough, a tough hand teaching her how to defend herself and how to, how to become a warrior. And it was so sort of inconsequential in the moment. But then you see how it plays in to 66 and, and how she carries on and, and, and how she prevails. And, uh, you know, it's so cool. So I personally love that format. I, I hope we get more and more Tales of the Jedi. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, it's, it's tricky because, you know, we started actually 17 years ago with recording this show. And because we were always uh, at least a season ahead. So we had recorded more than actually ended up being season six. And I wish some of those would get seen, but we did get to see some of them in animatic form, as they call it, kind of pre-animation uh, form. And the, the scenes where Obi-Wan and Anakin are out there, you know, by the fireside talking about Ahsoka. I would love to see those finished someday. I feel as though they could. But I also think that uh, I'd love to see Obi-Wan and Satine and when they were younger. I'm so sorry. We're not trying to be rude, but there's some bugs up here. Oh, and they're like we landing we on did. us. Um, I, it wouldn't have been an appropriate storyline, obviously, because they didn't exist yet. But. <laughs> Gino's in Queen coming to take the <laughs> But I, obviously we got a taste of it in Book of Boba Fett, but I wanted to see um, Ahsoka meet Luke or Leia. I really oh. wanted to see that happen. So we haven't seen that original meeting yet, so um, hopefully we can and see it. And Plo Koon and Ahsoka. I'm yes. awesome. Yes. Good to Plo Koon as well. <laughs> Um, well, I, uh, I can't conclude the panel without uh, Ashley. Uh, you've been a huge inspiration to me. You know, um, me and my clothing company was started really as inspiration because of you and her universe. And uh, there's probably many people representing her universe here in our, in our crowd. And I think you're wearing this outfit as well. Uh, her universe. And, uh, um, you know, speaking of seeing the characters kind of live on, what does it mean to be able to create? Clothing where the characters can live on through everyday merch and uh, through you know guys and girls being able to wear these all these characters. Um, yeah, so. thank you. Um, it's been amazing. I you know as a female fan, when Clone Wars started, there was nothing for me to wear. 
there was Star Wars t-shirts in the men's and the boys section, and so um, I'm super grateful. Sofa inspired her universe, uh, and, and really to just create an equal space for everyone. Um, Thank you to the fans and this thing, Ashley and Jay. 